Hey, welcome, guys. I'm talking to Dr. Michael Greger on his New York Times bestseller, How Not to Die. And he had a fantastic story. But I want to ask him, uh, what, what was the beginning? What, what makes you write this book? And what, what, what made you write this book? And for who did you write it for? You know, I wrote it. Uh, I wrote it for all the people out there like my grandma. Um, she's the reason I actually started doing all this. Um, I was just a kid, really, when, uh, you know, the doctor sent her home in a wheelchair to die. She had already had all these, you know, bypass uh, operations, basically get all scarred up inside. Nothing more the doctors could do. Sent her home in a wheelchair, crushing chest pain, couldn't walk. Life was over, age 65. Then she heard on 60 Minutes, actually, about this guy, Nathan Pritikin, who claimed to be, right. you know, reversing heart disease with a plant-based diet. Went to him, became one of his early success stories. She's actually featured in Pritikin's biography. He talks about Francis Greger. That's my grandma. Um, how, you know, she, they wheeled her in. A few weeks later, she was walking 10 miles a day. Went on to live another 31 years on this planet till age 96. Inspiring one of those grandkids out of her six grandkids to go to med school and giving her enough healthy years to watch him graduate. Um, and so it's really all thanks to her um that uh, i do what i do today and you know there are a lot of people out there suffering from chronic disease and so uh, you know i want them to have the options the good news is we have tremendous power over our health destiny and longevity the vast majority of you know premature death and disability can be you know can be prevented with a plant-based diet and other healthy lifestyle for most people, not to mention the role that food plays in our social life, in our cultural life, right? So it's not just individual decisions for our families, it's I mean, for ourselves, but also for our families, for holidays, for um, family gatherings, uh, eating with coworkers. I mean, it's a really a big shift. And so if it was not a matter of life and death, all right, well, I could see why people, you know, would be like, no, no, that's just too hard, right? But what we're talking about is preventing and arresting the 15 leading causes of death. So when, it, I mean, when it's that important, then it's worth making some investments in our health, even if it's not as easy as uh, one might imagine. However, it's getting easier and easier. Now you're seeing more and more healthy options, at restaurants, even some of the chain stores, even some of the fast food restaurants, fast casual restaurants are now offering healthier options. Um, and so it is easier and easier to, you know, go out to eat with friends and, you know, choosing healthy options from the menu. It's easier to cook healthy. Um, uh, there's a wider variety of healthy foods. And so yeah, I'm not, I mean, you know, I don't want to downplay it. I mean, it's a big shift right. for people. Now, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. You know, I think any movement we can make towards eating healthier, you know, crowding out some of the less healthy options by piling on good foods in our diet, you know, that can, you know, that can begin to shift our palates such that, you know, if you just all of a sudden switch over to healthy foods, you know, our palate is so used to the hyper salty, hyper fatty, hyper sweet, you know, that's been keyed up by this, you know, by the processed food industry, such that regular food doesn't taste very good. But give it a few weeks and all of a sudden your taste buds change. People go on a low salt diet, everything tastes like cardboard. You say, wait a second, I can't live the rest of my life like this. But what they don't realize, within a few weeks, your taste buds change such that regularly salted food, the, the level of salt you liked before is too salty. You actually don't like it. You prefer the low salt soup. Um, they've been study after study of this. It's showing that you just have to give it time to switch over. And all of a sudden, a ripe peach is like the sweetest thing in the world, whereas you have a ripe peach after a bowl of Fruit Loops, it would taste sour. I mean, it wouldn't even right, taste, right. you know. I mean, so we just need to really shift. But it takes some time. It takes some effort. But it's worthwhile because nothing, I mean, I, I'd love to take people on tours of hospitals. For people that have been healthy, have never had a loved one in the hospital suffering from chronic disease, they don't realize the loss of freedom. They don't realize the loss in in, 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 in their ability to live their lives being sick 
is no fun. And uh, so, I mean, it's it's worth it's worth doing anything to, well, you know, prevent ourselves from going that direction. Well, when I'm reading the book, How Not to Die, and you look at from cancer to diabetes to lupus and all these good chronic diseases you got in here, the average person looking at your book would say, now, come on, that's impossible. And you talk about pancreatic cancer, one of the things I really looked about, because I, I deal with a lot of cancer people when it comes to nutrition. How can they realize that they don't have to die? Well, I mean, so uh, the pancreatic cancer, unfortunately, remains one of the cancers that's very resistant to both conventional and uh, dietary treatments. I mean, I do uh, show some data that there's this spike ter spice turmeric right. that in rare cases, uh, like one in 10 cases, can actually appear to slow the progression of the disease which is about as good as chemotherapy can do, but what's nice about the spice is that you don't suffer the downsides of chemotherapy, but neither, um, uh, but we don't see reversal of pancreatic cancer using either treatment. However, we do see reversal of prostate cancer. Put people on a plant-based diet, put men with early stage prostate cancer on a plant-based diet, you can actually reverse the progression of disease. That's really exciting. Wow. Um, and what surprised me when I was going through this is that it's the same diet. So whether you're coming in it from kidney health, liver health, brain health, heart health, whichever direction you come in at it, it's the same diet that ends up having the most evidence in terms of prevention, treatment, and reversal of disease. Unlike, you know, drugs, there's one drug for this, one drug for that, but the same diet does it all. Um, and uh, look, but look, even if reversing heart disease, number one killer of men and women, if that's all a plant-based diet could do, well, I mean, that should kind of be the default diet until proven right. otherwise, right? right? And the right. fact that it can also, you know, prevent, treat, and reverse other leading killers like type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure, which just seem to make the case for healthy eating overwhelming. Yeah, because when I, I had a client that uh, or I was working with, and she had stage 5 kidney, and they was, they gave her, we gave her, asked her to give us six weeks, asked her doctor to give us six weeks to work on a plant-based diet, and it went back to stage uh, 3, and the doctor almost couldn't believe that eating a plant-based lifestyle was that possible. When I read your book, now, for these people that talk about gluten, gluten-free and gluten, I read your book about it, so what's your thoughts really on that? Because the world now is like, I, I need to be gluten-free because I got celiac, I got all kind of gut issues. What is that on your, on, when you talk about gluten-free? What are you talking about? Right, well, when people, if people really do have celiac disease, biopsy-proven celiac disease, which occurs about one in every 121 Americans, so less than 1%, uh, but they really do need to eat a gluten-free diet for the rest of their lives, a very strict gluten-free diet. Um, about one in a thousand people have wheat allergies, which is something else. And then about, about 1% have a non-celiac disease, gluten sensitivity, where eating gluten-containing grains gives them kind of irritable bowel symptoms, uh, like bloating and diarrhea. Um, and so... For those three groups of people, which add up to be about 2% of the population, so about 1 in 50, 5 zero people, they would benefit from a gluten-free diet. But, you know, it's like, you know, there's some people with peanut allergies. They eat a right. peanut, they could literally drop dead and die. Right. I, mean, I mean, you can't get more serious than that, but just because... One person has a peanut doesn't mean peanuts are bad for people, even right. if peanuts are so, so bad for some people that they right. kill them. And so the same thing. So for, you know, 98 percent of people, then gluten as a protein in wheat is a, as health promoting as the other plant proteins. Um, and so, you know, so I encourage people to eat all whole grains, including gluten containing grains, unless, of course, they have a medical condition that, uh, you know, uh, makes uh, gluten a problem. Yeah, but average person tell you because of the, the, the way they work in life and their schedules, well, doctor, I don't have time to cook. Uh, and, and, and everybody wants a processed lifestyle. How would you combat that? Because everybody's on the move. Right, no, no, absolutely. And I think, well, wait a second, what could be less, more convenient than like a banana or an apple? It's like even comes prepackaged in its own natural, I mean, it's like, Someone who says, I don't have time to eat healthy, has never met an apple. I mean, come on. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. Um, the, the, the reason I think people are, 
really addicted to this kind of processed foods is because the food industry sends millions of dollars, you know, tweaking that bliss point, making it just the right amount of salty, sweet, fatty to really target our, you know, dopamine receptors, our kind of pleasure centers within the brain. I mean, they have scientists working on getting people, you know, kind of hooked to these kind of foods. Um, but, you know, the excuses really don't pan out in terms of, well, I don't have time or it's too expensive. No. Healthy food, the healthiest foods can be some of the cheapest foods, can be the, among the most widely available foods. But again, you need to train your palate. You need to train your taste buds away from some of these unhealthy foods. Otherwise, you're just not going to enjoy it. But give it a few weeks and all of a sudden natural whole healthy food. So, you know, a sweet potato with a little cinnamon sprinkled on top is delicious. Whereas before, I mean, it would have been kind of tasteless compared to the, you know, cheeseburger you just ate. Yeah, because you, you find that right now with food, it, the people say, well, I just don't have time. I'm, I'm always busy. And, and I look at it, I said, you can't be that busy. So when we talk about diabetes, when you look at the studies from 2000, year 2000, about one in three children possibly born with diabetes, how do we stop that? Yeah, no, that, I mean, that, 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 is, a, that is a really frightening statistic. Um, diabetes is a horrible disease. Number one cause of adult onset blindness, number one cause of amputations, number one cause kidney failure. Um, but the, uh, the good news is that it's not only preventable, type 2 diabetes is preventable, treatable, and reversible, curable with diet alone. And we have studies going back to the 1930s that I talk about in the book, put people on a plant-based diet and you can get people off of insulin. Um, um, and this is even without weight loss. So if you force people to eat so much healthy food, put them on a healthy diet, yeah, and force them to eat so much food that they still maintain their weight, it's not the weight loss. You put people on a healthy diet, even at the, with zero weight loss, you can still reverse their diabetes in a matter of weeks. So people have been diabetes for decades, go on a healthy plant-based diet, and within weeks they can be off all insulin altogether, have lower blood sugars on you know, 30, 40 units less insulin. I mean, that is, it really speaks to the power of plants. But now, because it's so powerful, it's important that people do this with the supervision right. of their physicians, right? People underestimate the power of diet. So if you're on blood pressure lowering pills, blood sugar lowering pills, and all of a sudden start to eat healthy, and treating the cause of the disease, well, you can't have a normal blood sugar and then take blood pressure medication. You're going to drop your bottom right. your blood pressure out. You'll get dizzy, fall over, crack your head open, right? You could drop your blood sugars too low. You're injecting insulin, but all of a sudden you don't have diabetes. That could be a real problem. So you need to have your doctor wean you off these drugs. As you eat healthier, they'll have the, your doctor will have to take these drugs away, ideally, so they won't need drugs at all, right? The cause of these diseases is not medication deficiency. The cause of these diseases are lifestyle choices. Okay, but well, they've changed the diet. And I, this, I see this all the time. And then the medication does what you just said, does it makes them pass out, feel bad, but the doctor won't take them off. Ah, well, they need a new doctor. I mean, look, they need a new doctor. I mean, they need a doctor that just understands. Or you go to your doctor, or you have a doctor that's open-minded enough and not too arrogant to be able to, to, to look at the literature. So you can, I mean, you can, you know, you click on sources cited against any of my videos on nutritionfacts.org. You can pull up the list. You click on it, download the PDF. You take it to your doctor and say, wait a second, there was a study here published in the most prestigious medical journals in the world showing that you can actually reverse diabetes with this kind of diet. And so, you know, this is, you know, have you heard about this? You probably weren't taught about this in school. Well, here's the, here's the, and then when they do it in their own practice, when they see the results, um, then look, you could be the impetus to, you know, helping thousands of people in your doctor's practice. So, you know, not necessarily immediately jump ship to a different physician. Hopefully talk to your physician, show them the evidence in hopes that they will then take it and help other people in their practice. Yeah, because I, that's what I do run across a lot of doctors. Just, I call them dinosaur doctors. They won't look at anything else. So in the book, we start talking about the, the plant-based food. We talk about the grains. Now, is there any grains you wouldn't recommend? Well, I really encourage people to stay away from refined grains. So these refined grain products. So white bread, you know, white bagels, white pasta, white, you know, I mean, these are, 
They have had much of the nutrition stripped from them. It's ironic that they call it refined when it's actually, I mean, they should call it depleted. They should call it, you know, um, uh, so they remove the fiber, they remove most of the nutrition. Um, and so I encourage people to eat whole grain products and ideally even intact grain products rather than eating um, flour um, based foods like bread, even if it's whole wheat, even better than that would be gra that grains that are intact like steel cut oatmeal, something like that where you can actually see the individual kernels because then no matter how well you chew, little bits of that um, food actually make it down to your colon. Um, and feed your good bacteria. If we just eat flour products, even whole grain flour products, they're so efficiently digested in our small intestine, we end up starving our, our, our kind of microbial self, um, not leaving any uh, leftovers behind for our gut bacteria. Um, and, uh, and that's uh, something that, uh, and we're learning more and more about the importance of our good gut flora for overall health. Yeah, in your book you talk about children uh, getting six minutes of exercise a day, how impactful that was. Why do, we, why do you think a lot of people are afraid of exercising? Well, you know, you know uh, that's a good question. I mean, I, again, I think it's, it's people that don't exercise. It's that first step. People don't realize how much better exercise can make you feel. You know, uh, people don't understand how well they can sleep after exercise. Um, how it can help people deal with stress, improve their immune system, they don't get sick as often, um, give you more energy. Um, I mean, so there's all these benefits that can actually boost your mood, going out and running around, um, uh, so you just feel kind of happier during the day. Um, and so, but if you don't do it, you don't realize the benefits. Um, and so I encourage people, you know, give it a try, like an experiment. You know, you don't have to be like, oh, same thing with diet. You know, if I tell people, you know, eat this way, they say, oh, I, I can't go my whole life eat without eating a pepperoni pizza. So they don't even make the, st the first step. I say, no, 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 no. Give me three weeks. So for three weeks, you know, eat this way, live this way. And then look, you know, if you don't like it, you can totally go back. Whatever you want to do, it's your life, it's your body. Look, you want to smoke, it's your body, your choice. I mean, I'm just telling you the predictable consequences of your actions. But after a few weeks, people feel so much better just on a day-to-day -day basis. Forget all the chronic disease risk, what's happening inside their arteries, their kidneys, all the benefits inside. They actually feel better, and that can be the motivator. You know, people have joint pain. All of a sudden, their arthritis goes away. People feel so much better. They're like, wow, you couldn't pay me to go back to way the way I was, you know, the way I was eating before because they just they, they experience the benefits of their own life. And so then they're not you know, eating out of fear of dying, but more out of joy of living, and that's sustainable. So I encourage people to give it a few weeks. Yeah, but Doc, you're talking about giving up something I grew up on, my meat and my eggs and my cheese, and just going plant-based, but I, I love meat and I love eggs. What do I do? Yeah, well, yeah, no, I mean, we love the foods that we grew up on, that are pound. And now, you know, in different cultures, they eat different kind of strain. You know, we might think, oh, eating bugs is gross, but other places they grow up eating bugs. You really like bugs. I mean, our, our tastes are adaptable. I mean, people look, the people eating healthy, you know, eating a big salad or something, be like, I could never live like that. It looks like such deprivation. But once your t palate has changed, once those foods, I mean, w I mean, it actually tastes good to you. You're not depriving yourself. It's actually delicious, but it takes a while for those taste buds to change. So again, you know, you can go, there's great resources like uh, 21daykickstart.org. There's an organization, Physicians right. Committee for Responsible Medicine. The first day of each month, 12 months a year, they have this free program. You sign up and it's like a community. You do it all together. Um, they give you free tips every day and recipes and stuff. And again, it just gives you that first, those, those tools for the first three weeks to get you started. And then once, you know, you know, if you've been following something like blood pressures or blood sugars or cholesterol, all of a sudden your cholesterol dropped like a rock. In fact, so much so your doctor may be able to stop the cholesterol medication, these kind of things. So you wait a second, I don't have to pay for drugs anymore. I don't have to take drugs anymore. I don't have to, you know, risk drug side effects anymore. Wow, there really is something to this. And then, um, you know, once you shift it over, I mean, and everything is tasting good, food that you'd never even think to eat before, all of a sudden tastes really good. 
then you just don't have the the kind of cravings you had before. But again, it's hard to even it's hard to even believe that until you give it a try. And that's why I encourage people to do just give it a try um, as an experiment. What the heck? You know, what do you have to lose? And uh, and well, what you have to lose is your chronic disease risk. Okay. What about soy based? Uh, alternative substitute meats. What do you think about that? Because it's the world yeah, yeah. and it's everywhere. Right. No. Well, I mean, I, th I think it's a great thing that it's everywhere because it's good transition foods. You know, it's hard for someone who's been growing up, you know, eating ribs every day of their life, all of a sudden to start eating salad, start eating, you know, bean burrito, start eating some healthy food, pasta, primavera, that kind of thing with lots of vegetables. And so what these foods provide, like the veggie burgers and veggie dogs, now they got everything, veggie chicken, veg, you know, whatever you want. Um, it gives that same kind of savory mouthfeel, right? I mean, so it's, it's very familiar what you have before. Um, so instead of, you know, the, the five bean chili, you're still eating kind of meaty chili. It tastes like meat, has the same chew of meat. Um, and so it's like you may not even notice the difference, but what there's a lot less saturated fat, zero cholesterol. It's much healthier. Now, is the bean chili even healthier still? Absolutely. And I encourage people to continue to move in that direction, not get stuck there just eating the, the kind of mock meats. But um, it's a great way for people to start to move right. over. Um, and so I encourage people to give it a try. And I think they'll be surprised. And you'd be like, wow, I mean, I wouldn't have even known it. Some of these things, like the new chicken products, I mean, you, you pull them apart. It's got like all the little muscle fibers and stuff. I mean, it looks just like chicken, tastes like chicken, but much healthier for you. I encourage people to continue to try to add more whole foods in their diet. But as a way to start that process, I think those, are, those, uh, those products are great. Well, that's, that's awesome because I get a lot of people ask me that question. They say, you got all these fake meats out on the market. Do I eat them or do I not eat them? And then... So what is your take totally on just soy, though, versus uh, non-GMO, I mean, GMO, non-GMO, or just uh, not organic soy? Yeah, no, so I, I encourage people to choose uh, uh, non-GMO soy. So that's either non-GMO conventional soy or organic soy, which by definition can't be GMO. And that's just because there's less pesticides. Um, uh, but you, know, you don't actually find much GMO soy in kind of in the food supply, it's mostly fed to animals. A GMO soy, uh, kind of you know, pigs, chickens, and cows. Most of the soy that's actually used in the food industry, like these fake meats and uh, you know, tofu, tempeh, these kind of things, the soy yogurts they have out now, is done with non-GMO soy. Um, now look, there's more processed, less processed soy. So like anything, you always want to try to go a little less processed. You know, some of these, uh, you know, fake meat products have a lot of so have have about the same amount of sodium that you had before. Um, and so, you know, don't offer the full range of benefits, but a lot healthier. It's definitely a step in the right direction. And, uh, you know, often it's that first step that gets people down the path. And so uh, that's great if people can just do that little tweak that they may not even notice in their lives and then start them on this path towards eating healthy. Then it's like, well, wait, that wasn't hard. I mean, that, that was easy. Well, hey, maybe some of this other stuff these uh, crazy doctors are talking about is easy, too. All right. That's, that's awesome here. Hey, guys, this is the Chef Dr. Timothy Moore with uh, Dr. Michael Greger here on this new book, New York Best Time Seller, How Not to Die, guys. That's, that, that's how not to die. You hear this on mainstream all the time, people talking about how not to die. But it, it's, it's, it's real what a plant-based diet to, can change your life, because I've been through that myself. Losing all the weight, I lost 165 pounds by totally going plant based, and I thought I was going to just die for a second because I was a was a southern boy from the south and had to have my ribs and chicken. But who knew that going plant based and eating beans and just rice and greens, healthy greens, it's changed my life. And knowing that this book that I'm reading is it's just fantastic. And it gives people another light. I mean, I, I just commend you for your thousand speeches that you went around the world talking to people about. I commend you about your your, your website. There's so much on nutritionfacts.org that a person can get. I mean, you give a wealth of information for free. And, and I tell people all the time, I say, unless you do it, it's not going to matter. You know, you can look at it and read it all day long. And <laughs> you, got to, you, you got to do it. Absolutely. Oh, well, you are uh, you are such a great role model for that. Keep up the good work.